Hi, folks. This is Rick Doc Walker, the DOC. This is John Kime, and you're listening to The Mess Hall with Rally Captain and Tailgate Ted. What's going on, Rally? Happy belated birthday, man. Hey, man. Thank you, man. And and, and I got to tell you, it feels good to be another years old. I'm not going to mention how old I am, but it just feels to be <laughs> to put another one in the books. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for allowing me to do that. And and I'm feeling good, man. How you feeling? I'm feeling good, man. I had a cold past two weeks. It's taken me two weeks to get over this thing. And it feels good to be back to normal-ish. And good to be talking about some football again with you, if we can actually talk about football, man. It's been an can interesting we? week. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we make up the rundown. So, yeah, we can talk about what we want to. But uh, I don't know if Coach wants us to actually talk about football. And for those of you wondering, mm. we'll get to those statements in a minute, man. But uh, – I'm kind of bummed, man. Kind of frustrated, though. Uh-oh. Why, so, why are you bummed? I don't think you've been watching the Women's World Cup like I have. I've been getting up at 2 o'clock in the morning. This past Sunday, I got up at 4.30 in the morning because it was the knockout stage, right? Mm -hmm. And they had a chance to win three World Cups in a row, which has not been done. I don't know if it's ever been done, but... And if it has, it hasn't been done in a very long time. And we have played like ass. They did not do well. Those ladies played their best game of the entire cup. And then it went to penalty kicks. And they just, I don't want to say choked, but they ended up losing. And all I got to say is, and you're rocking it right now, those of you wondering, catch this on YouTube because we do a video portion for the show. The entire show is on YouTube. Rally's rocking his Don't Sleep Energy gear. Right now, he's got the hat on. He's got the shirt. And I had the drinks beside me at 6 o'clock in the morning while the women's team was not doing so hot because I was dog tired after staying up. Not staying up, but after getting up to watch that game. And now they're knocked out of the World Cup. So I don't really have a reason to get up at three o'clock in the morning anymore, but I'm still going to be drinking my don't sleep energy. Well, I can hear it in your voice, man. Your voice still sounds a little raspy there, brother, but, but it's all good. And, and, and as my co-host said, Hey, nothing beats swag day. And today is swag day. Our partners at don't sleep energy drink sent me a hat and a t-shirt. And I got to tell you, this is the fit is sweet so is i nice. greatly i greatly appreciate it so when they say don't sleep on it <laughs> don't sleep on it because this is the bomb bro it really is and i greatly appreciate them and not only do they have great wear they have a great energy drink that you guys have got to try if you haven't had it yet i mean it comes in two types you got sugar-free or regular you know and ted he he rocks the sugar-free i need the sugar so i enjoy the sugar all day, every day. And I think next episode, uh, I'm actually going to present you guys with a can. And did we ever get a winner that for, for no, our contest? We didn't, man. We didn't. And for those wondering, we, we, are, we put the challenge out there to our listeners. We know people are buying. The fourth person that sends us a screenshot of their order from Don't Sleep Energy using the promo code DMV Mess Hall, I got tickets for you for the Ravens preseason game, that Monday night game, come on out. And we're actually going to debut a new segment on the show called the commander's player to not sleep on. Don't sleep on this commander's player for the Browns game. We're going to save that for the end of the show. Or group. Or group or that. position yeah. group. That That position. is true. Yes. But I'm looking yes. forward to it, man. And you're looking good in that gear. I, I'm glad I didn't wear mine today. I was actually thinking about it. We will look like twins because I just shaved my head too. So. <laughs> well i'd be the better looking to win but it's, it's all good anyway let's get hey, back hey, to football hey. brother <laughs> well speaking of football those of you that listen to this show and it was actually it's fun man because i was at a training camp i think three days if not four days last week and there were a couple fans that came up to me and they legit said that we listen to you guys for our coverage the team isn't on broadcast tv anymore they don't have shows on there anymore and we catch up with you on rally to kind of find out what's going on and some people may not have heard ron rivera's comments that have kind of been all over the internet all over espn pro football talk different places and 
I know you heard them because I saw some of your tweets and I actually wanted to text you about it, but I kind of wanted to save it for the show. But this is actually what Ron Rivera said that started up just basically this entire mess. Take a listen. Going back to the enemy and its intensity, have players had to kind of adapt to that and have any, I guess, sort of struggled with that at times? Yeah, I mean they have, and 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 one of the biggest things is 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 you know, and I've I had a number of guys come to me and I say, hey, just go talk to him. I said, understand what he's trying to get across to you, you know, and and I think you know, I think as they go and they talk and they listen to him, it's it's been it's been enlightening for a lot of these guys. I mean, it's a whole different approach. Um, you know, you, again, you get a different kind of player from from the players back in the past. Um, especially in light of how things are coming out of college football. So a lot of these young guys, you know, they do struggle with certain certain things. Um, and a lot of you also got to take for where they've been. I mean, guys coming from certain programs are used to it. Guys coming from other programs aren't as much. So, you, you know, us as a coach, you know, I, I kind of have to assimilate and get a feel for everybody. You know, Eric has an approach, and it's the way he does things, and he's not going to change and, and, and because he believes in it. Jack has his approach. You know, um, having been a head coach, I think Jack has a tendency to try and figure guys out a little bit more as opposed to, hey, this is it, this is the way it's going to be, that type of stuff. Where Eric Eric hasn't had that that that, uh, that experience yet. And just that when they came to you, it was just they felt like Eric was riding them too hard? or Well, um, they just were a little concerned. A little concerned. The players went to dad to complain about the enemy coaching them too hard. And kudos to Nikki Javala for asking this question. But she asked Ron, and Ron came out and aired the team's dirty laundry. You don't do that. I, I agree with you. There's things that you, you keep in-house. There's things that just don't leave the walls of that facility mm -hmm. and yes i get he was asked a question but it was up to ron on how he wanted to answer that question mm -hmm. and answering it the way he did to me just completely threw eric the enemy under the bus comparing him to jack del rio because jack was a head coach before and eb hasn't been one for whatever reason and it's well documented that the enemy has tried to be a head coach and has been turned down. And Ron basically poured gasoline on that fire with his comments, in my opinion. And mm -hmm. it was just unneeded and uncalled for. But if you look at it the other way, even if he said that, then it also makes his players look just marshmallow soft. <laughs> And that's terrible, man. That 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 right there. I never thought about marshmallow soft, and 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 I can, I can close my eyes and think about how a marshmallow is. I mean, you make s'mores with them, God dog it. Come on, man. I'm I'm hoping that realistically, Ted, that that as my old coach told me, that would light a fire underneath my butt to get moving. And and and, and let me say this, Ted. When those players came to Ron, I wish that Ron would have answered it in four words. Eight, eight, and one. Those four words. And as far as answering the question to Nikki Giovanni, the way that he did, I would rather have Ron answer that question, how he answers the injury report before a game or before before they have to officially come out with it, what does he always say? We'll get back to you with it. Simple. I'm not going to answer it. Simple. And move on. But nope. He had to figure that he had to say more. And we've always said with Ron Rivera, less is more. I think Ron stopped listening to the show because he would have <laughs> probably caught on by now that less is more. And I was calling into B. Mitch and Finley. I, I was pissed yesterday. I was hot. Mm -hmm. And so were a bunch of callers. And some people were defending him. We actually have a voicemail from Greg, who left us on our listener line, talking about Ron. What's up? Uh, big fan of the skin. Big fan of what y'all doing. 
uh, you and uh, Ted and uh, Steve, uh, Rally Captain, it's my man. But on this particular subject about just being to me, I mean, Ron Rivera, someone being to me on the bus, man, y'all got to take a sleep, uh, seat on that, bro. Uh, the man, all he said was that the players came to him, uh, mentioned that, you know, maybe it was too intense or whatever it was, or whatever the fact, whatever the quote was in his, uh, his, uh, press conference. I don't see nothing wrong with that. The, 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 it's been put out there for a couple of weeks now that the media has been dragging. Oh, he's, he be is too, uh, uh, he cussed too much or he does this too much or it's been, they've been, the, the, they noticed that the, uh, practice has been ramped up. Great. So, if, if you're a player or a grown man, this is a grown man sport, I do believe. And if they chose, I mean, if they have a problem with, go to the store. That's basically, he told the player to go to the store, have a conversation with E.B., and E.B. said, hey, man, this is what it is. They ran with it, and everything is good. So what's the big deal? Because he said it to the media? The media already knew that. It's no big deal. The media already knew the question. That's why they asked that proposed the question. He's not supposed to answer it. So, we're so caught up as a fan base and what Dan Sider did over the last 24 years and all the scrutiny and that. Man, this is nothing. Y'all, the dude said nothing wrong in the interview. I done listened to the press conference four times. I found nothing wrong with it. It makes sense. The media asked it. He responded to it. I think he did a wonderful job. Now he should be fired. He should be gone. Ask yourself this. Let me ask you this question. In the last three years, when had Ron Rivera had an actual time to coach the football team itself? Without all the craziness that goes on in Washington sport, and, and where the Redskins, commanders, the football team, when has he had a chance to coach the football team? Answer that question. Without the cancer, without the COVID, without his mom dying, without answering all the stupid ass questions that he asked, excuse me for that, but answering all the questions about the team when he wasn't even here. Again. And I didn't cut him off. I think his cell phone cut off. But Greg, first, thank you for calling in. I appreciate you listening, appreciate you following, appreciate you chiming in. Mm -hmm. And that's where the appreciation stops. Because I don't agree with you one bit. If this wasn't a big deal, it wouldn't be on SportsCenter. You wouldn't have Tyreek Hill, who used to play for BNME, tweeting, man, there is no other coach that has your back like EB. Take that coaching and get better. we all been through. It's tough, but I promise you, it will make you better. You wouldn't have Jamal Charles saying, I love EB. I know he coached different, but I don't know one thing. He can take another level, though. You wouldn't have former players coming up to defend their former offensive coordinator. You wouldn't have Cam Curl, who was on this team, tweeting, we ain't soft. So it's obviously got to the locker room. And it's obviously got to the media. And Ron did what he tells everybody not to do. He made the interesting important by opening his mouth and answering the question. Nikki did not know that the players had an issue and that the players went to Ron to talk about EB. The media had no idea. She was just doing her job and probing. And Ron did not do his job because he aired out his dirty laundry and the team's laundry, and it just wasn't needed. And they made a mountain out of a molehill. He's got no one to blame but himself. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't be sorry. You said what you had to say, and now I'm going to say what I got to say. Greg, you're my man, 50 grand, and you know that. You know, you're going on, you've been on a trip, you've gone on another trip with me this year. So there's no love lost. You know, it's all good, bro. So take what I'm about to say the same way I took what you had to say. Our show is based off of 
military, DMV mess hall. I was in the military, and for all my mem members who are in the military, currently serving, or that have served, you may have a feeling about where I'm about to go with this statement. And Greg, if you were in the military, then you know what I'm about to say as well, or you'll feel what I'm about to say. Basic training, you go, you go into basic training as an individual. They shave your head, they take away, back in the day it was a Walkman, cassette tape, whatever civilian outside world traits that you had, they took it all away from you, your individualism to become one. And I don't know about you, but yeah, I wrote home to my parents and said, the drill sergeant, they are rough. And right now, Eric Bieniemy is our drill sergeant. He's the team's drill sergeant. And yeah, I wrote those letters saying, home saying, mom, it's, it's, it's tough out there. But at the same time, six to eight weeks later, after I got out of basic training, I was a changed person. This organization needed the change. And yes, we heard Deion Sanders say, I'm bringing my luggage to Colorado because Colorado is what? One in 14, if I'm not mistaken. Well, compute that to the pros. Eight, eight and one, seven and nine, and so forth and so on. I don't, I don't need to continue saying what our record was. So you needed someone to bring the pain, if you will, to get these guys starting from a new offense to build up something that, that can be Super Bowl bound. And it's not going to happen being soft. It just isn't. We know what soft is. And I'm not saying that our guys are soft, but we know what soft looks like. One of them is. And, and Eric, this is true. And Eric basically said a mouthful, if I don't do my job, I'm going to get fired. That's all that needs to be said. So in the NFL, a lot of times we got guys on the field, on the team right now, that probably should not have a job. But because of where they were picked or because they are a favorite of some sort, they won't get fired. When someone else could come in possibly and do the job better. So all I'm going to say is we need someone to spark that fire. And yes, you're correct. Ron has gone through a lot of things. But you also got to remember, Greg. These are the things he wanted. He wanted to control everything. He wanted to do all these things. No one made him do it. He could have brought someone in as an assistant coach a long time ago to take a lot of this heat off of him. Until now, he's just doing that. So I love you, bro. I do. But like Ted, you're wrong. And I'm sorry, when is Ron coached? He's collecting a paycheck over these past four years. So he's been a coach this entire time. And it's sad to say, but he should have been fired. Any owner would have fired his ass by now going into the season of his contract. But we did not do that. They did not do that because Snyder would have had to pay his entire contract out and the man was selling the team. He has not had a single winning season here as a head coach. Going 500 is not having a winning season luck boxing your way into the playoffs because Doug Peterson wanted to bench his starting quarterback against it. When we played the Eagles because they wanted a higher draft pick does not mean you had a winning season. Sorry, Ron had to deal with COVID. So did the rest of the NFL. Don't give me that excuse. Yes. He had to deal with cancer. Okay. That sucks, but you have staff to help you out. He's not the only coach that's ever faced adversity. And you know what? These players are facing adversity right now. And he did not have to share that one, if not more of them, had an issue with Biennemi's coaching style. Because frankly, this team needs a kick in the ass. And this is actually what Reggie, one of our diehard listeners, had to say. Sup, fellas. It's Reggie from NC. I got a four-letter word for y'all. S-O-F-T. Dude's complaining about how EB coaches are soft. He is here to win. If they're not with that, Open up a roster spot for someone who's in on winning. EB is a breath of fresh air. Looking forward to see y'all at the Eagles and Atlanta games. Hail. That's not the four-letter word I thought he was going to say. Same here. 
<laughs> but you know what? I agree with Reggie, man. It's just, I've been out at practice. I've been to all of them, but three. EB yells at you when you mess up, but you can also hear him yelling at you when you get it right. He is consistent. And this is actually what Biennemi had to say during his press conference. You have a reputation of being, you have some intensity about you. So I'm curious, like, you know, Ron was talking about how, like, some players maybe had to get used to that. And they went to him and expressed and said, hey, sit down with, with Eric and kind of go over stuff. What is, you know, how do you approach that? And, you know, do you, do you how do you feel about that? And, and, and just having to deal with guys who maybe aren't used to that quite as much. Well, first of all, one thing I am, I'm an open book. And I always invite players in. But also, too. As I've, I've gone through this process, yes, I am uh, intense. And I would be afraid, too, to start if I didn't know him. But on top of that, one thing they do appreciate is this. I'm always going to be upfront and I'm always going to be honest. Just like I stated when I first got here, we all got to get uncomfortable to get comfortable. Okay? There's some new demands and expectations that I expect. I expect us to be the team that we're supposed to be. It's not going to be easy. And everybody ain't going to like the process. But when it's all said and done with, my job is to make sure that we're doing it the right way. There's a way to do it. Now, do they understand that? Yes, because they're seeing the results. Will everybody buy in? I believe so. But if not, it's okay. Because you know what? My number one job is to help take these guys to another level. And I can see it. Because when you think about where we started in the spring, to where we are right now, we're making a lot of strides. I'm proud of these guys. It's been some, excuse my language, some good shit to watch. I love it when he curses, man. It's just, <laughs> to me, he's being real. That's right. 100%. 100% ten toes in, man. And last week, I complained about the offense. They were just getting demolished, right? First day of pads, I was out there, and then we recorded our show afterwards. They got killed. It kind of sucks that we didn't have another show between now and then, because I'm looking at my notebook. Second day of pads. It was the best day to that point that the first team offense had actually had. Well, I don't, I don't know what they did, whether they listened to our show the night before, basically calling them out and just, you know, not exactly calling them soft, but offensive line looking like straight garbage. They stepped up, and whatever EB was doing or whatever he said to them after that first day of pads resonated because those guys actually moved the ball, and not against the second team, against the first team. They were doing a bunch of quick passes, a bunch of outlets. The screens were actually working. They were keeping their blocks, and they were giving Sam time to throw. This past Sunday, they had a full pad of practice. They had off on Saturday. First team offense, first team defense actually got into a couple of fights. Mm -hmm. Nick Gates got kicked off the field for throwing a punch. I mean, there was a bunch of different guys. Benjamin St. Juice, mean mugging someone. I can't remember who it was. I want to say it was Hodges after breaking of a pass and not even trying to pick him up. But you've got guys that we talked about it that are showing that dog in them and that are stepping up. And you're starting to see results, not just on the defensive side, but also on the offensive side of the ball. And to me, that is the enemy effect that we have not had here forever. I can't mm -hmm. remember the last time. Actually, Joe Gibbs 2.0 is the last time I remember seeing any of this. And it's refreshing to see. But it's needed. don't air it. It is needed, man. It is yeah. so needed. We're in a new era. Here's the thing. If you if you really want to welcome in uh, new ownership, new players, new coaches, or whatever have you that's new, then you've got to really realistically be able to open your mind and free your mind of all that old stuff that was there and embrace the new stuff. And, yep, it's going to be tough. Learning something new always is. It's like my Spanish. It, it, it's never going to be good, but at the same time, I had to learn some of it. So, <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's not easy. Sometimes I want to throw the dog on book away, 
but you got to keep going. And that's where we are with these guys. Embrace it because it's going to make you better. And like we always say, you don't want to be here. There are 30 other teams that uh, you can look at. So well, the, I, I think that whoever, and granted, I'd love to know who it was. I know yeah. it's never going to come out. Yeah. But I would pay some damn good money to find out who it was because it's got to be someone on the offense. And talk about bulletin board material. You know, can you imagine, you know, uh, whoever the hell it is, uh, Michael Parsons just beating someone on the offensive line? See, mm -hmm. your ass is soft. Yep. Yeah. You know, it just, it writes the story, writes itself. And mm -hmm. the enemy has created winners in Kansas City. We know what that team has done. It is documented. And what he did over there, he is bringing over here. He is keeping it 100% the exact same. And this is actually what he had to say about potentially toning down his coaching tactics. In, in examining the way you coach, right, have you ever said, I wonder if I have to tone it down at all, or do you just say, this is how I am, and I'm just going to roll with that? I've been coaching since I retired from football. So you got to understand this. With the group, I'm always going to remain the same. I'm always going to be loud, and I'm always going to be vocal. I'm always going to demand for my leaders. But on top of that, I'm watching everything. Okay, Body language. How we're addressing the huddle. How we're getting up to the line of scrimmage. How we're presenting ourselves. Those things are important because you got to send a message to the defense. And so I want our guys to clearly understand that we're not taking anything for granted. So when it's all said and done with, do I spend time with players? Yes. You guys have been here. You see me pull players over to the side and have long discussions with them just so we're all, always on the same page. So Eric Bieniemy is, is who he is, okay? Eric Bieniemy knows how to adapt and adjust. Eric Bieniemy is a tough, hard-nosed coach. But also understand, I'm going to be the biggest and harshest critic, but I'm also their number one fan because I got their back and I'm going to support them at all times. I might start talking about tailgate 10 in the third person and EB's yeah. trying to make it cool. But I'm telling you, man, it's hard to see on the video, but I get goosebumps listening to him. And yeah. we talked about it during mini camp, during mm -hmm. OTAs. Everyone made a big deal, like Greg said, about him cursing and him yelling at players and this and that. And is it going to get old? I'm sorry, I don't think it's going to get old. I don't think yeah. it has gotten old. Being out there, witnessing it, watching it, because he's consistent the entire time. He pulled the first team offense out because it didn't get into a huddle fast enough. He is demanding perfection from his players, which we have not had. Mm -hmm. It was well-documented. And let me finish this one point that last year, the wide receivers during drills weren't running the same routes at the same depth. That's how unorganized practice was. You had Curtis Samuel running it in at five yards Terry running it at seven, I'm just using examples, and Diami running it at 10. And you wonder why Carson wasn't getting the ball where it was supposed to be because he didn't know where people were going to go. And he also had a bad arm and was a horrible quarterback. <laughs> but still, you have consistency in coaching, which we have not had mm -hmm. forever. You know what that shows me, Ted? It shows me that I'm – that Eric B enemy, Coach B enemy, is not going to leave any stone unturned. Meaning, how many times have guys tried to use a scapegoat? Well, I, I, no one told me that. Well, we know here, yes, you were told, you're going to be told. And if you don't do it right, you're going to be told again. So, once again, he can say on the film, hey, no, I told these guys what to do. And they didn't do it right. So now, because they didn't do it right, that's going to be your cue to pack your suitcase and go if that has to happen. I never want to see anyone fired. I never want to see anyone let go. Uh, but this is a, a billion-dollar business, billions of dollars of business. How about that? And because of it, guys need to be on par. That's all he's trying to do, whether they like it or not. And I, and I think realistically – they know he's telling the truth. They know it. 
And I think maybe one day it got to them. And I'll give them a pass this one time. I'll give them a pass. It's human nature to say, hey, man, why are you riding me? It's human nature. Okay? That's your one pass. Get over it. Can I'll, I may be mad at you, but I'll still be able to break bread with you. And that's one of the things that we got to get past it. So it's said and done. It's over with. That's their past. Show me the improvement. Otherwise, as you said, Ted, when they go against Cleveland in two days, or as we say in the military, a day and a wake up, if, they're, if they look soft, like you said, bulletin board material. So now is their time. If you don't like them riding you, do it right. Do it right. And you won't have that problem. If it wasn't a big deal, Ron wouldn't have came out today. And those wondering, it's Wednesday at 518. Mm -hmm. And literally had a prepared statement that he mm -hmm. read. Mm -hmm. Those of you that missed it, this is actually what Ron had to say. I open up with this pretty much. You know, I realized my comments yesterday took on a different life than I intended yesterday. And that's on me for not being as clear as I needed to be. I'll own that. At the end of the day, we know that we're trying to build here. And we're all aligned. As I've said many times since I've hired Eric, I love the overall message that he gave to the team his first day. And that was basically, we got to learn to be comfortable when we're uncomfortable. And I think what's happened is for those guys on that side of the ball, things are uncomfortable. There's been a lot of change. And the entire way of doing things has changed on the offensive side. Change is hard, and I've always encouraged our players to have great dialogue and build relationships with our staff. Since those conversations took place with Eric and the players, I've seen the improvements. And I can honestly say that the last couple of practices probably have been the best of training camp, which I think is great. To me, that displays a team is beginning to embrace the message and approach to how he does things and how we want things done. I also want to clear up the reverence I made about Jack in comparison to Eric. I did not communicate that correctly, and I met with Eric. We had a great conversation, and that was cool. I think the biggest thing is that we're all on the same page, everybody. I'm fortunate to have an experienced staff, guys like Eric and Jack, and a roster of players who want to help this franchise take the next step. We're all working to build a culture where players and staff can respect each other's point of views and the way that we do things and continue to be very professional with one another. At the end of the day, we're all a family and we're working towards the same goal and that's to win. I just wanted to get that out there so everybody understands I wasn't as clear as I probably needed to be and I own that and that's on me. You told him you'd, you said you'd give him one pass. Mm-hmm. I hope we don't have to give him a second. Yeah. Because Ron learned, hopefully, his lesson. You don't I think the, I think the overall the team did, did. I think the overall team did. Excuse me for interrupting you, but yeah. I think the overall team did. I just, time will tell. Because the players, they, they just complain. But to me, they complain to the wrong person. You got a problem with what your coach is saying? Go talk to your coach. Don't go talk to your coach's boss. I mean, there's a chain of command. Mm -hmm. And if you don't want the answer that you think you're going to get, then you immediately skip that chain and go to the person above. No, that's not how life works. That's not how your day-to-day -day job works. And this is a job for these young men. We all have jobs. Those of you listening to this, I'm assuming, have jobs. You don't immediately go to the president of the company because you don't like what your manager told you or because your manager is not giving you off for Labor Day or whatever the reason may be. You mm -hmm. go talk to them and you have that discussion. And I don't think we will hear anything about this again unless the team is not winning because that's when stuff starts to leak even more. Mm -hmm. And we haven't even hit the first game of preseason. No, man. And this stuff is happening. And I thought that we were kind of done with the whole non-football stuff. This is still technically football because you got your players kind of talking about, you know, hey, he's riding us too hard. You know, they're not even doing two-a-days. I remember being out there for two-a-days back in the day. Yeah, man. You know, 
they're not even hitting like they used to. They're not taking guys to the ground. And I get it. That's the modern NFL. I'm not trying to sound like an old fogey here shaking a cane up at the cloud, just screaming at these kids to get off my porch. But if you're complaining about this, I mean, come on. This has been so, – I mean, and I'm not the one out there running sprints. He's making every running back, regardless if they're on their own 20 or if they're on the 45, take the ball to the end zone every time. Finish that play every time. So, yeah, that's got to suck in 100-plus degree heat. I'm standing there and just hanging out with a hat on, sweating my ass off, being miserable. I can't imagine having pads on and being miserable. But that's yeah, yeah. Go you ahead, talked sorry. about you talked about basic training, man, <clears throat> and that just prepares you for what you have to do when S counts. And to me, yeah. that's what the enemy's doing. Yeah, and that, that's basically the same thing I was going to uh, reiterate. But but uh, you said it so eloquently. And the fact also, Ted, is, and, and this is what bothers a lot of people, you're getting paid millions of dollars to do this. Shh. You're getting paid millions of dollars to do this. Or for some, hundreds of thousands of dollars to do it. So a lot of people don't have, okay, they just don't have that card, sympathy card for you. They don't. And like you said, hey, we're on the sidelines. We're, we're, we're running, drinking our, our water, Gatorade, whatever you want to call it. And, and they're energy. doing it. And don't sleep energy. But you're getting paid to do it. And that is your job. So don't complain because it could be a lot worse. It could be. There was actually a fan that was given, I, I think it was Troy Apke some crap on the sideline because apke has been kind of the joke of the fan base and some of the media has given him a hard time since he's been here. And AG stood up for him, said, this is hard. If you could do this, you'd be out here, but you can't, you're on the sideline. I'm paraphrasing what AG said, but AG stood up for him, right? What they do is tough. I wish I had talent to be able to play the game that they're playing because we do this podcast because we love this game we love this team god didn't bless me with that you know i can stand up on a surfboard and cook a mean burger that, that's pretty much it those are my talents <laughs> and i can cheer on this team well i've never seen you i've never seen you surf but i have seen you cook a mean burger so i i'll give you that so you got to provide some video footage of you surfing bro i mean come on man but we'll get there. I got to show Miss Tailgate how to use her cell phone and actually hit record instead of taking a picture. And I didn't say how long I was standing up, by the way, but okay. I just stood up. But right. it's just, I, I get it, man. What they're doing, it, it ain't easy. And being in this heat, I remember Rivera last year talking about how the heat led to injuries for this team in this and that. Well, we'll see if this is going to become an excuse, but I want to move on from this. But the last clip I want to play I feel we have to hear because it's going to be my new ringtone. Last one. Did you and Eric have a chance to talk again specifically about yesterday? Um, we did. We talked about it, and it's you know, and it was just I basically told him I put my foot in my mouth. Um, I think what I said wasn't as clear as it needed to be, and I think the understanding of 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 it is just the fact that I think everybody's making, in my opinion, a little bit more than needs to be made of this. So that was Ron's apology. To me, kind of a half-ass, backhanded apology. But, hey, that's his opinion. Just like Greg has his opinion. And, you know, I, if Greg would have texted us, I would have thought that that was Ron's burner cell phone, but he left us a voicemail. So we know <laughs> it wasn't Ron chiming in. And believe it or not, there were other fans that tweeted us back, said, no, it's not a big deal. No, y'all just need to move on. No, the media is stirring stuff up again. Hey. I appreciate you guys interacting and chiming in. And I appreciate Ron saying I put my foot in my mouth because every time I get a scam call on my cell phone now, that's what the ringtone is going to be because I know I'm not going to pick up mm. at that point. But I hate those scam calls. Drives me crazy, man. But we got a football game in two days, depending on day, when you're listening to this. A day and a wake up. And it just came out that Sam Howe is going to be starting. 
Are you surprised that they came out with that statement? No. And I'll tell you why. As, it, as we, we've all said, we know what we have in Brissette. We still really don't know what we have in Sam. And I think that in real world situations, instead of going up against, as I've always told you, our fellow man, you're going up against another jersey. And it's going to be a more than likely a brown jersey. And we'll be wearing burgundy, I'm assuming. You're going to be able to see what the offensive line is going to do to your QB1. And can your QB1 think on the go? Get it, Are the cobwebs been shaken out since the last game that he's played? Mind you, we're talking about practice, and our, our defensive studs have been all in his face, apparently. So now we get to see how that offensive line fires out against another opponent who they don't care about. So you still care about your friend. I, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer of that. Yeah, everybody's trying to get their starting position, but that's still your buddy across from you. Now you get to show what you've learned and accomplished against someone else. So we'll be able to see that. We'll be able to see how Sam reacts. Like I said, are the cobwebs out? Did, did, he, did, he, did he retain everything that he needed? And I think that he will, hopefully. That's always the rally captain's view. Uh, I hope that he was able to retain everything and, and get everything on board because he's still fighting for a job. He's QB1, but he's still fighting for the job, just like Brissett wants to be that number one if the time comes. So do you think there really is a quarterback competition happening between Sam and Jacoby? No, I don't feel that there's a, a QB competition. Well, put it this way. If there is, they're doing a good job of keeping it quiet for the first time <laughs> so uh i don't think that there is a QB co competition I, re I really don't I, I think i've said it from the longest time this is sam's t team it's, it's sam's position to lose this is his opportunity and once again they are they are are, are really trying to keep that if you will out of the media that aspect of things out of the media so Rivera did mention to media during one of his pressers, and I was trying to find a clip, but I almost feel that the team took it down, that there is a competition going on between these guys. When he made that comment, Brissett had not taken any first-team snaps. It had been Sam taking all the reps with the ones in 7-on-7, seven 11-on-11, 9-on-7 seven, on seven, on seven run install. Sam was doing everything. Well, the other day, Jacoby finally took some reps with the ones. And I almost feel it was because of what Ron said during his press conference. I don't really think he's that calculated or was doing it because of that. But this is actually what he had to say about Brissett taking those reps. Um, we saw Jacoby with the first team just uh, a little bit today. It was, I think that was the, the first time doing that. Just can you kind of walk us through the thought process there? Yeah, uh, at some point, he's going to have to work with them, you know, just so he gets to know them and they get to know him. Um, we started talking about that the last couple of days, trying to figure out when would be a good opportunity to do it. And uh, so one of the things that Eric and Tavita thought this would be a good good one with the 10-10-10 practice today. And so we went ahead and gave him the last couple in each period. So I can appreciate that because those of our listeners that have stood with us since day one know that he did not give Sam Howe any reps when Taylor Heineke was QB1 and Carson Wentz went down. To me, that made no sense. You were literally one Heineke, close eyes, throw the ball up in the air, F it, Terry's down there from getting knocked out of a game. And Howe had never thrown a pass to 17 or back then 10 or one, which made no sense to me. Because that young man, Sam, could have been in there and been your starting quarterback in a second. So I appreciate that Brissett finally got some snaps with the ones, that it wasn't a ton of them, but he finally got some. But I agree with you. There is no quarterback competition here. Just like there was no quarterback competition the year before with Carson and Taylor, and there was no quarterback competition before that with Ryan Fitzpatrick and Taylor. This is Sam's team right now. Mm -hmm. and. I don't think we're going to see anything. This is preseason. We are not going to see a game plan. We're going to see a very boring vanilla offense that they just want to see if they can execute. 
Can mm-hmm. Sam get the team in and out of the huddle? Yeah. Can he get the plays in from the headset and actually get the guys lined up properly? Because the yeah. referees were there the other day, and there were a lot of yellow flags running around. Guys lined up for illegal formation, illegal procedures, false starts. And, yes, it's a preseason game. I don't think the dog pound up in Cleveland is going to be that loud and that crazy. But <laughs> let me tell you, we weren't that loud and crazy at practice or training camp, and you still had guys jumping off sides. So yeah. it's things like that that I'm tempering my expectations on what it's going to be like. But I am excited to see him mastering whatever offense they call. Mm-hmm. Is he choosing the right guy based upon what the defense is doing, based upon how they're lined up and going back and watching that film? And that is going to tell us a lot. It's going to be tough to see that during the game, watching it on TV, because you just don't get that view and that vantage point. But I'm also curious to see what's his defense going to do. You know, how are they actually going to step up? How many plays is Chase going to get? Mm-hmm. How many plays is Montez going to get? You know, what's actually going to happen? What's Jamin Davis going to do? So it'd be interesting, you know, not just from an offense perspective, because that's true. We're only going to go as good as this offense is going to take us because we know what the defense can do. But do we really know what the defense can do? What this first team defense can do? Because I don't know if we do. We have a lot of ideas of what they can do, but we also know that it's kind of been unchanged and they didn't do what they needed to do last year. And even though this is a new year, so we got to put that away. Uh, but to answer one of your questions, uh, I feel they're going to run a lot of base, just just base offense, just like you said, just to see where they are, to make sure that the guys can get the, the right snap count, to make sure the guys can line up properly, because those are the building blocks. And if you thought you got yelled at, <laughs> then wait till you get back on that plane, come back from Cleveland, you're going to really get yelled at. That's, so be prepared, prepare yourself for it. But it's 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 part of the for the course, man. This this is what it's all about. It's all about building, starting from zero, and moving your way up to ten or one hundred or whatever your denomination is that you're trying to strive for. So let's let's not put the cart in front of the horse. Let's just let it work itself out. And before I get ready to get off of this, I'll say that uh, once again, it reminds me of 2012. With RG3, new quarterback, new offensive coordinators, no one knew what we were going to run. And we ran a lot of just base stuff. But then it all came together during that first game against the Saints. And we saw what we were working with. I was actually remembering that game the other day because the junkies were talking about it. And no one had any clue at that point what was going to happen. And coming out with that RPO and that read option and everything else, I remember, and this is going to sound nasty to some people out there, but no joke, I put my boxers in a Ziploc bag after that game because those are going to be my lucky boxers for the entire season if we kept that (laughs) offense up. (laughs) And I was going to put them on before the games, have to figure it out at the tailgate, maybe get a little changing station and put those things back on because if that offense could put up those kind of points against the Saints out of nowhere – Let's be damn sure I'm going to try and keep everything Mm -hmm. on from that day and keep that good luck going. And no one knew what Terry was going to be just going back to something more recent. Mm -hmm. We thought he was just going to be a special teams guy and just a regular receiver. And now he is wide receiver one and one of the faces of this franchise. They kept that under wraps. And to me, the true test is not going to be these preseason games or the game this weekend. It's going to be that practice that, Hopefully, you're still going to against the Ravens and what the team's actually going to be able to do because what a lot of fans don't understand is practices against another team, the guys can focus on specific things. When I say guys, the coaches can focus on specific scenarios. You want to focus on third and seven. You want to focus on goal line. You want to focus on your two-minute offense. You can go back and forth and work on that and agree to do that with Harbaugh and his coaching staff. And that's Mm -hmm. what happens when teams practice together. They understand where their deficiencies are and you practice them against the other team versus in a game. 
who knows how many snaps Sam is going to get. Carson got 22 snaps, basically three series against whoever we played last time in the preseason, that first game. And you don't really control, you well, not really, you don't control those scenarios at that point in time. Mm -hmm. So yeah. whoever gets a chance to go out to that Ravens practice and when the media is out there, that's what I can't wait to hear about. Yeah. How did that offensive line look against them? Because I'm telling you, the Cleveland defense isn't going to be doing a bunch of stunts. Mm -hmm. They're not going to be pulling out a bunch of stuff from their playbook to truly test our offensive line. So no. just like you said, it's going to be vanilla. Rivera actually said the offensive line looks solid the other day. And I really don't believe him. And maybe that's just me. I've been burned by him too much. But this is actually what Biennemi had to say about the offensive line when he got asked him. And so far, EB hasn't let me down. How do you feel the O-line is coming together? You know what? Our young O-line, they're doing a heck of a job. Uh, like I said, there's been ups and downs. There's been some days that hasn't been as good. But there's been some days they've done a hell of a job. And the thing that I'm loving about that group is that they're having fun together. O-line groups are very, very unique because everything is based on communication. They probably do more communicating with each other than any other position outside the quarterback. And so I love seeing the personalities develop. These guys are working. We got some big, strong guys up front that are tough, that are hard-nosed. And then here's the thing that's kind of unfair, which it is good in a sense, obviously, because we're on the same team. But think about the guys they get to work against, okay? Those guys get to help them to become better professionals. So what better challenge than to face the front four that we're seeing every single day? I love it. I live for it. And I can see the improvement in our guys. Now, has it all been perfect? No. Nah, it's not what training camp is about. It's about working and fine-tuning and learning how to grow together and become one as a team. And then once we start putting the pieces together, everything else will break, make us into that fine uh, uh, oil machine moving forward. So I love where they are right now. I'm going to take his word for it. I'm going to take Benjamin's word for it that he loves where they are right now because he has been realistic. And granted, I don't think he's going to call the offensive line a poop show to the media because he's not going to want to throw him out of the bus like that. But where we are right now, in the third week of training camp, he's good. We'll see if they really are against the Browns and against the Ravens next week, not counting that actual Ravens game. But we teased a new segment that we're going to do for the show with Don't Sleep Energy. What commander's player do you want to tell the fans, don't sleep on this guy? Make sure you watch this guy because let's be real. It's preseason. It gets kind of boring come mm -hmm. the second quarter, the third quarter, fourth quarter with a bunch of guys that are not going to make this squad or may make the practice squad or be on someone else's roster. I'm going to say a position group to it. And I think that I, I don't want to sleep on the offensive line and I, we hear it constantly, but let's face it. You got to be able to get it done in the trenches so I'm hoping that the offensive line won't let me down and we can't sleep on these guys. And I agree with you. It's not just the starting five. It's the guys behind them. Because we all know that it's a game of attrition. Guys are mm -hmm. going to go down. Yeah, Can their backup step up? How are they going to be when their name's called? You know, Sadiq Charles has been unhealthy. Chris Paul has been coming in. Paul hasn't been around. You know, it's just, it's a rotating door of people. And how will this offensive line? Because we need to have depth and they haven't invested a lot in there. They picked up a new center. I think with Strongbow, you know, they've got some guys in there. How are these guys going to step up if their name is called and when it's called? So to me, that's a good one. I'm, I'm definitely going to be keying on that offensive line. I'm going to make sure I don't sleep on those guys when I'm watching the game. For me, it's running back Chris Rodriguez. It's that six round pick from Kentucky. Because he has looked good at camp. He's looked explosive. He's got some hands. I want to see what he can do given a chance. And we talked to Lake Lewis about this. I don't know why Jarrett Patterson's still here. I really don't <laughs> think he's making this roster. He's not making it as a special teamer. He's not making it a running back. 
they granted it was a six round pick, but teams and coaches typically will keep a draft pick because it's an investment six round, not a big investment, but it's an investment. AG, we all know what's going on with his contract coming up. You know, this guy is most likely going to be on this team. So what is he going to be able to do? And I think we're going to get a steady dose of watching him towards the middle to last half of this game. And I want to see what that young man can do with his opportunities. Can he pick up a blitz? Can he actually gain some tough yardage? And then I want to see, you know, how he responds to the adversity that he's ultimately going to face coming in being a six round pick. So I'm looking forward to watching this game. I'm looking forward to talking to you about it next week. I want to change topics to something that I'm not really looking forward to talk about, but I feel we'd be doing our listeners a disservice without bringing it up. Have you seen this serve, not serve it. Have you seen this petition going around from the Native American Guardians Association? I haven't seen the petition, but I've heard about it. And um, someone did share it with me. Um, but I got to tell you, Ted, that when a lot of that type of stuff comes across my, I guess, inbox or it comes across whatever, it, it goes in one ear and out the other, man. I, I don't I don't pay it any attention. And um, I have to tell you that when I did see this, I just went ahead and swiped left, if you will, and kept it moving. I don't think that it's going to gain much tra traction. Um, I've been to so many games, away games, that have had huge protest. Uh, I think back in, what was it, 20, 2013, when we played Indianapolis, I got caught up in, with a protest. And, you know, from, I don't speak Native American tongue, but I have some friends on my, on my list on my, on my fans or, or, or friends, if you will, that do speak it. And they said, this lady cussed you out from, from, from sun up to sundown, basically. I didn't know what she was saying, but it was caught on tape. And, uh, you know, I just don't think it's going to happen. Now you never can say never that if it's anything I've learned in life, you never say never, but I don't think that at this point it's going to happen. Uh, will it be good if it does happen or will it be bad? I don't know. I mean, it's it's like the whole RFK scenario. Will it be good or will it be bad? I mean, nostalgia wise, yes, it's good. But without the parking and, and a lot of tailgating, will it be good? So you gotta gotta weigh the two. And so this is one of the things that I will sit back and just get my popcorn ready and and, and watch the show, if you will. And for those of our listeners that don't know what we're talking about, there's a online petition that's been circling social media. I know that the people that I talked to, I think they were down in Bob Beach, they're not on social media. And kudos to you guys, because it's a pain in the ass. It's a headache. There are days when I just wish I wasn't on it, but we're on it because of our brands and the show and this and that. Well, they apparently just got 72,000 people to sign up. And the whole thing for the petition is, Change the name petition to Redskins. They're trying to get the name to go back. They actually announced that they are going to start a boycott against the commanders. They are threatening a boycott against the team unless they change the name back to commanders. And hey, hats off to them. And to me, this started because the ownership group started using the old name. I couldn't call the team the Redskins when I went on TV anymore. I had crates and crates of props that I would bring on TV with me that I had to put in storage because I couldn't have the old logo on TV. I was on the NFL draft during COVID and I had to build a man cave in my house and I couldn't have anything with the old name or logo in the background when Roger Goodell was doing it from his couch that one time and they had fans in the background. So it almost became a word that we couldn't use around here for the longest time, at least from a media perspective when you were talking about the team. And I had different outlets, whether it was Fox or NBC or CBS asking, do you know any super fans that we can talk to that wanna talk about the team? 
not the name, just the team in general. And I've got a bunch of people's names and numbers in my cell phone. I had to ignore a bunch of them because two thirds of them would not use the new name. I'm not talking commanders. I'm just talking Washington football team in general. Mm -hmm. And I don't blame them. It's a part of our history. So it became taboo to say, but when the Harris group took over, they referenced the old name. They brought it up multiple times. Even before that, the team itself started putting up different pictures of older logos and the legends in it. Well, people then started to think, especially because of Magic Johnson's statement saying, you know, we'll evaluate this in a year, you know, and hoping and grasping that the old team name might come back because they're going to change it again in a year. So then now you've got all these 72,000 fans that are going crazy thinking, oh, man, we got Snyder out of here. Now we're going to get our team name back. It's going to be back in the glory days just like it used to be. I'm sorry. That ain't happening. People forget that merchandise was taken off the shelves at Amazon, at Target, at Nike. Stop selling Redskins gear. Mm -hmm. Yes, FedEx Field at that point. Granted, to me, wanted the name changed. I almost don't want to bring that one up because we all know the argument between the FedEx field owner being a part owner of the team, minority owner of the team, and Dan Snyder and everything going on there. But when Target, Nike, and Amazon stop selling your gear because of the slur that the name changed into and the racially charged society that we were in, that hasn't changed. Mm -mm. So Matt Paris actually had a really good article talking about this. And he said, those reasons were well documented in 2020, three years ago, the murder of George Floyd by Minneapolis police set forth a national reckoning over race related issues. As part of that movement, which saw numerous entities grapple with names and images long deemed offensive calls renewed for Washington to change the name that many considered racist to American Indians. That hasn't changed in society. So no. the team actually came out with a statement. And this is what I was waiting for because the guys were, like I said, were using it in press conferences and going back and forth. Well, here when it did is. They, when, when did they come out with this, Ted? They came out with this statement looking at this article. This article is from Wednesday, August 2nd. Okay, last week. All right. While we're while we're while we're talking about this, you know, for for everyone who's been to these away games, I think about Minnesota. I think about Arizona. I I, I think about uh, some other teams sites that we that I've been to. You guys just don't. And if you haven't been, I'm gonna try to paint a picture for you. You don't want to be in the middle of this stuff. You really don't. And it was bad. It 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 really was. And I'm not going to say I fear for my life or anything like that, uh, but just seeing the passion in these people's eyes who who really feel as though you're calling them a mascot and they don't want to be called a mascot's name or looked at upon as a mascot. That spoke volumes to me because I was just like you, our listening fans, uh, we'll never change the name and the name should be this way. Well, I mean, I, once I was in the middle of it, and I and I and I saw everything that was that happened. There's a part of me that said, "Well, maybe we should," you know. And I get it. There are people who, to this day, still comment on my post with the Redskins. It'll never be anything else than everything, anything but the Redskins. And 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 I get it. And I always say the same thing in my heart: it will never change. However, the name has, and at some point in time. At some point in time, you're going to have to move on, just like a like a divorce or a marriage. I mean, if it's over, a breakup, if it's over, it's over. You still love that person, but they weren't right for you at that point in time anymore. So here we are. And I get that there are some Native Americans out there that don't have a problem with the name. <laughs> but like you, I interacted with the ones that did. And who am I to tell them you shouldn't be offended? Words evolve over time, but you shouldn't be offended. Who am I to tell them that 
you know, it's okay because these guys are okay with it. I'm sorry. I had to teach my in-laws that using the term Oriental is not okay. I'm an Asian American. Calling me Oriental, and not that they did, but just saying I'm Oriental is not okay as an Asian American. Mm -hmm. To some Native Americans, using the term Redskins is not okay. Maybe to some Asian Americans, they don't mind being called Oriental. But I do. I have a problem with that. And who am I to tell them? I raised, and we talked about this before, it was $15,000 I raised for the Blackfeet tribe during COVID for PPE. Gave them a $15,000 check. It was actually a money transfer. But they were hesitant to take the money because it was coming from a Redskins fan. They had an issue with it. $15,000 during COVID. We all know, and it's documented, how reservations were hit truly hard during this mm -hmm. pandemic. And we're giving them money, just as a fan group, something that Hale Barbecue did. And they were reluctant to take the money, man, because of who we cheered for on Sundays. That, to me, speaks volumes. Doc Walker won Super Bowls for this team, and still, to this day, has not called them that name. And he wore the jersey. He won rings for them, and he still won't call them that. He'll call them the Burgundy Eagle, but he won't call them that. Mm. And this is actually the statement from a commander spokesperson. A commander spokesperson said in a statement that Mr. Harris's use of the Redskins moniker does not signify a shift in the team's policy toward its former name. For nearly 90 years, this franchise had a different name, and fans and our new owners alike have fond memories of cheering for that team and watching it win three Super Bowls, a commander spokesperson said. Making historical reference to watching and rooting for the Redskins does not signify a shift, nor does it change the reasons for dropping the names. So, hey, we can all hold out hope. We held out hope that Snyder would eventually sell the team or it would get taken away from them. So those 72,000 fans that are signing the petition and passing it on. Some of you are attacking me for not promoting it, whatever. It's, you know, it's up to you. I just mute you and move on. If it goes back, great. But what made it change was money. These guys just spent $6 billion on this franchise. Do you think they want the headache of now bringing up a racial topic again being center stage for this team when they can just name it easily red hogs or red tails and just move on sorry i don't think we're going to get it back this isn't a genie bottle where we get to rub it and make three wishes we got mm -hmm. one wish and that wish was dan snyder being out of our lives and i'm going to be fine with that whatever we're called you and i have said repeatedly we're going to root them on as burgundy and gold, and that's all that matters. But stop with all this. Yeah, burgundy and gold until the day I'm dead and cold. Yeah, I just, I wish as a fan base, we could just appreciate the sport now. But it'll never happen to it. I know. <laughs> Man, and, it, it, because once again, I, I, we brought it up before. If they, whatever they decide the name, change the name to, there's going to be someone who's not going to like it. They just there aren't. Is. And so if these guys boycott it, hey, you know what? There have been a lot of people that have been boycotting this team for a long time. I'm sorry. I ain't going to miss you at the stadium. I ain't going to miss you at the tailgate. You're not going to miss them on away games. Someone else is going to step up because a lot of people are buying season tickets, man. And I said it the other day on Twitter. I haven't cared to watch Sam Howell or Chase Young at practice. To me, the highlight has been reconnecting with all of these former season ticket holders, and it has been like a family reunion out there. And That's it's right. been so amazing to see. And I just wish that these other people complaining about stuff is not football would just shut up and just jump on board this bandwagon because it's moving, man, and oh, it's yeah. going to be a juggernaut. Yeah, the train is leaving the station, and I can't wait to get everyone's reaction from Friday night's game, as well as giving you my reaction from Ravens training camp on the pod next week. And I hear the music in the background, which lets me know that we are 
coming to another end of a great episode of the Mess Hall, DMV Mess Hall with Tailgate Taylor, Rally Captain. And always in closing, rep it hard, but don't rep it at all. Rally Captain, Tailgate Ted. Mm-hmm.